The village of Sayward respectfully acknowledges the land that we are gathered on, the unceded ter traditional territory, the Comox First Nations, the traditional keepers of this land. Call to order. Introduction of late items. No, there we go. Approval of agenda. Is everybody good with the agenda today? Yes. Councillor Tinsley? Yes. Excellent. Petition and delegations. We have Mary Ruth Snyder, Executive Director of the CHAG, Campbell River Chamber of Commerce. Come on up, Mary Ruth. You're the one and the only tonight. It's just one that requires you to be fairly close is all. Okay. <clears throat> and Melissa said she gets a little lag. So do I need to speak a little bit slower nope. to accommodate that? No, you're okay. All right. Um, so as, so as I understand it, um, the, um, the village has gone through an enormous amount of transition over the last three years. And there was a global pandemic in the middle of that that has impacted everybody in every nation, at every village, at every city. It's had a huge impact. So what I'd like to do <clears throat> is to share with mayor and council and thank you for having us by the way having me by the way um in addition to being the executive director of the campbell river and district chamber of commerce i'm also a resident of the village of sayward and i'd like to share two different perspectives with you that are aligned and similar that have sort of led myself and the chamber and all of the other organizations that I've been involved with forward. I grew up on a farm, not undifferent from any of the farms we see up and down Sayward Road, five acre hobby farm, five kilometers outside of a little town called Harrow. It was 2000 people that lived in town. They had a mayor and council. I think they had seven members, not five, but very similar. And there was service organizations in town Rotary, Kinsmen, Canets, um, the Lions, the Legion. And one of the things that I remember very distinctly from my childhood is that everybody paddled together. Everybody made sure that everybody was working in the same direction. If anyone had an issue, everybody came together to find a solution to move it forward. And it worked. And so that really informed my DNA as I grew and into my adult years. Fast forward in the last 25 years, I've worked with nonprofits and media cohesively. And again, it's been that cohesion and the collaboration between everybody involved that has always led to successful outcomes for everybody that was involved in whatever we were doing. And then when I took this role as the executive director of the Campbell River and District Chamber of Commerce, I began it in August of 2019, right in the middle of the Western Forest forestry strike. That was a very challenging time for me to begin a new position and to try to learn that position. And what I learned very quickly, again, working with all of the organizations in that first six months that I was in the role, which took us up to the beginning of March, we in Campbell River, there of course is the city, there is the regional district, there is the downtown BIA, the Willow Point BIA, the Campbellton Neighborhood Association, and a multitude of other organizations that all work together on the TAC committee, which is the Tourism Advisory Committee for the City of Campbell River, the Destination Campbell River team that are under contract with the city, 
And of course, the Coalition 10 Homelessness, there's almost 30 organizations and city organizations that have worked together over the last three years to move the needle on anything to do with the homeless issue in Campbell River and the surrounding district. So when the pandemic hit, <clears throat> because of the six months that led that I was in the beginning of the job, I spent that first six months building relationships with North Island College, Vancouver Island University, all of the community organizations, the ECDEV team for the city. So when the pandemic hit, we instinctively, because those relationships had been solidified, all came together and collaborated. And we were able to help the businesses pivot within a matter of weeks and get themselves e-commerce based and pickup driven so that they could weather that first six months of the pandemic, which they did. That summer was the best summer the retail stores in Campbell River had ever had because of the collaboration of literally every single one of those organizations that I've listed before, everybody was supporting each other. So if somebody put out a Facebook post, everybody else was taking it, sharing it, and pushing it out to their own audiences. So those two experiences in my childhood, seeing everybody paddling together in the same direction, and seeing it also happen in Campbell River over the last two and two years, two years and 10 months. Yes, I'm counting. It has been a wild ride, but everybody has been paddling in the same direction. And it's really, really moved the needle in amazing ways. Do we, does every community across Canada have a way to go with homelessness? Absolutely. The housing issue, big problem. Absolutely. We have some really big problems to solve. Knowing that we have those big problems to solve that might be a little bit out of our purview because they're they're on the desk of the governor of the Bank of Canada who's going to be raising interest rates this week, which is only going to make things worse in some cases and hopefully bring inflation down in others. But we're in a really bad place nationally and internationally. So those things are a little bit out of our control. So instead of trying to spend any energy on that, let's put our energy into what we can control and in what we can do to work together. I understand that Sayward Futures and all of the committees that were established over the last 20 years, all of the agreements that were in place with Mayor and Council because of all the transition over the last three years have come to an end, or they did come to an end in the past. So, all I will say is that knowing that we can move the needle if we are all working together and rowing the same direction on these things that we can impact and can move the needle on, then let's do that. Let's just keep moving forward. Let's not look back. There's no point in looking back at history. There's no point in looking back at the way things were. COVID has changed the world for everybody. In in every possible way. But we now have seen a new resurgence of good neighborly behavior, not just here in the village, but in the valley and in the whole of the district. I've seen it in all of the other communities. And it's wonderful to see that because I think everybody realizes that before the pandemic, a lot of people worked and existed in silos. We cannot, as a community or as a province or a country, continue with that siloistic behavior. We have to tear the silos down and we have to work together moving forward in the direction that is going to impact all of us. So as you as the conversations unfold tonight, I really hope that there is a way forward to put some new agreements in place. It's very, very important for everybody to work together. And I can give you two really good examples of why it's important. About a decade ago, there was an organization, a nonprofit society in Campbell River called River Corp. 
and it was at arm's length from the city and it was responsible for economic development. About six years ago, it imploded because there was no governance, there was no reporting mechanism to the city and things went sideways very quickly. So they that was disbanded and the city was able to bring economic development under their umbrella. And so their economic development team has now grown from one to three and they are cohesively working with all of those partners I've already mentioned earlier, the BIAs and Destination Campbell River. And so Destination Campbell River is under the economic development umbrella of the city. They have a five-year contract now in place. They've just signed for the next five years and they report to the city every three months. They provide a comprehensive report to mayor and council and to the tourism advisory committee of which there are um, a number of us that sit that are sitting on that board, including on the advisory group, people from the industry. So we have hoteliers, we have tour guides, we have restaurateurs, and we have two general public people that have joined, um, that have been asked to join through the city application process. And again, that group meets every three months as well to hear this report. And it's been great because it's helped us all feel completely connected to what is happening on the front line for those tour operators, for the hoteliers, for the restaurants. And, and we've all been brainstorming ways that we can help them. The biggest problem right now is short, st short staff. So that's one example. The other example is a little bit farther down the road with the Comox Valley Economic Development Society called CBEDS. CBEDS is no longer in existence. It ceased to be about a year ago. What happened with CBEDS, again, it was at arm's length from all of the municipalities. There was a reporting, I'm using air quotation marks, mechanism in place. And they were responsible for the Comox Valley, Cumberland, Courtney and Comox to oversee economic development, destination tourism, and tourism. And yes, there is a difference between those two. And what was happening is that instead of providing detailed analysis, they would provide a single line item of $800,000 staff and admin and no breakdown of what that included. And so in 2015, Cumberland, the village of Cumberland pulled their funding and went on their own. And two years ago, the town of Comox pulled their funding and went on their own. And then a year ago, the district finally was able to disband that group. It was run by a board of directors that were chosen by the executive director. There was no hands on oversight by the district, by the town of Comox, by the city of Courtney or by the village of Cumberland. Now what has happened is all of that has come back under the district umbrella and now everyone is back working together and they're all paddling in the same direction and everybody is happy. Comox has come back, Cumberland has come back, the district is back and there's staff reporting every quarter. And everybody is on the same page with the reports. Everybody understands what's happening on the front lines and everybody under, I'm trying to look at Mr. Tinsley. Um, and everybody is understanding who is doing what, who's responsible for what, and where the money is going, where before that wasn't happening. So, and I recently had a firsthand experience with a federal grant through the DC Chamber, and I had to account for every single penny of $115,000. So my Excel spreadsheet took me three days to make sure that every single penny was accounted for, and it was. And then it also turned into a 162 page report to support where all the money went. All of the social media posts, all of the metrics for each one, all of the advertising, all of the conversations. It was very comprehensive, but it was successful and we received the balance of the money because of the grant reporting that was provided. Again, the only reason I was successful with that grant is because I had the support of every single community organization, the BIAs, 
the neighborhood association, the ECDEV team of the city, the city, the district. I know I'm forgetting somebody, but because we all worked together, that's what made the difference. And I was accountable to every single one of them because their name was on it. I was the lead, but their name was on it. And I, I think we are at an amazing spot right now because the four of you, five of you, if Mr. Kirshner joins this, is that you have the power right now to point us on a direction of a successful, collaborative, transformative future for the village and the valley. And I think the transparency is so key. That is the other thing that I've noticed over the last couple of years is that the level of transparency has skyrocketed with every organization that I've been working with and from within, from their own structures. And that has been so refreshing. And, and I also uh, wanna take a second to congratulate Mayor and all the council members on the foresight for hiring the current CAO. I'm on LinkedIn and I LinkedIn is the professional version of Facebook. And so I have over 700, almost 750 connections on that. And one of the things that one of the people I'm connected with are all of the CAOs of all the regional districts and all like mayor and council. And I, I'm connected to everybody that has anything to do professionally in any of those worlds and, and, and also media as well. And so when Mr. Johnson was hired, I looked him up on LinkedIn because I was kind of curious. Well, I was shocked, beautiful, like in, a, in the most surprising and happy way that you had the foresight and the wisdom to hire somebody who has over two decades of experience working in the tourism industry, and not just that, but managing teams of dozens of people and capital projects in the millions of dollars successfully. So his business acumen and his tourism experience, you could not have hired anyone better at this moment in time at this crossroads that the village is at and we have a choice to move forward in such a productive amazing transformative collaborative way and i can't wait to see how this unfolds and i'm really excited to see the relationships become solidified and everybody working together thank you does anybody have any questions <laughs> Councillor Paulson, do you have any questions? Councillor Tinsley? Just, uh, just sorry, two, Councillor just quick, Tinsley. Sorry, just two quick questions. Uh, uh, thanks, thanks, Mary Ruth. Sorry for my throat. Um, can you just quickly describe this question one, the difference between destination tourism and tourism? Uh, so destination uh, destination marketing actually it's destination marketing so basically destination marketing is marketing the geographical area of what you're trying to promote and tourism is the collective of all of the businesses that actually work in tourism so all of the tour guides the helicopter rides um, the skydivers the hoteliers the restaurateurs the retail shops Anybody that has anything to do with tourism would be, be the tourism. And then the destination marketing is promoting the geographic area. So I understand that with Destination Campbell River, um, they are interacting with all of the tourism groups and all of the people involved in tourism, but they are responsible for the destination marketing. And as a result of their amazing team that has worked together over the last five years, they went from one follower on Instagram to over 20,000 followers on Instagram now today. And so they're interacting with people throughout the province, throughout Canada and throughout the globe. And so that has really upped the game for our entire district because 
they have uh, a neighborhood, I, I'm not sure what the name of it is, a good neighbor agreement in place with like the village and the other, like Gold River and Tassos and Zabalas and right. um, <clears throat> Cortez Island and Quadra Island to, um, to make sure that they are including these areas when they are promoting. So it was sometime about a month ago I saw, because I don't follow them, I like I, I don't have time for social media because I'm a little busy. But when I do go on social media and I happen, I happen to be on Facebook this one day and there was this wonderful post that they had put up and it was all about Sayward. The photos were absolutely spectacular and the write-up was absolutely stunning. If I was anywhere in the world and I saw that, I'd have been on the next plane to Comox or Campbell River and rented a car and come because it, it was just that enticing. So that's where the destination marketing really plays a key role. And with them, they're experts. That's what they do. That's they work with their. So they have two bosses. So locally, Destination Campbell River, the team has an executive director, Carly Parabu. She answers directly to Rose Klukas, who is the economic development officer for the city of Campbell River. And Carly and her team also work for Destination Think, which is a global destination marketing company, and they have offices in Vancouver. So their CEO is based in Vancouver, but they have offices literally around the world, and this is their, this is what they do. This is their specialty. They are the world leaders in destination marketing. So they have a, so Carly and her team have a lot of support when they're designing ads or if they need something, they have an entire team in Vancouver that does that back end work for them, but they actually do the engagement on behalf of Campbell River on all of the social media platforms. Does that help? Yes, thank you very much. The other okay. quick question, I, I think you also maybe answered it, but I guess we're part of sort of the satellite communities with that, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And Great. I believe that um, I see the mayor shaking his head. There's there's a current ag agreement that you guys paint. It's not very much. It's no. like a thousand dollars a year or something. No, I think it's even less than that. Okay, it's not very. It's, no, not, it's not very, very expensive. expensive. But the additional thing about destination marketing, um, and this was something that I mentioned at a recent meeting down at the Cable House with with Sue and some of the other people that were there, is that with the destination. A Destination Campbell River website, they have a mechanism in place where any business that has anything that has to do with tourism, so like the wharf store, can put a, can, can create a profile on their website that gets thousands of visitors every day. So I have the, the, directions page, which I'll be circulating um, with uh, with all of the current businesses in, in Sayward that have anything to do with tourism, they can create this page for free on the destination Campbell River page. And it's just an additional piece of advertising. I think, I think the key thing is that I know there's a Sayward Futures page and that's that's great. And even the Sayward Futures website could have its own page on Destination Campbell River because it will drive traffic to that page. And so, and then if every other business that is local, either, so it could be Bud, Log Bud Logan's hiking, it could be somebody wanting to do kayaking, it could be a B&B, &B, it could be the store down at the wharf. Every single one of those can create their own profile for free and have their posting up on. Right now, you type in Sayward, you get two hits on their website. I know there's a lot more going on here in Sayward than two hits. So um, the farmer's market, they should be on there, right? You've got a thousand. <laughs> okay, here's a really good example. This this week, which is partly why I'm dressed like this, I'm I'm I, I'm running a golf ex, uh, golf event down in Campbell River for the next five days. So it, I've got some friends of mine that are coming from Victoria to golf. 
they tried two months ago to get a reservation at any of the hotels. I gave them a long list. Every single hotel two months ago was booked up for this week and from now until September. So they ended up booking in some obscure bed and breakfast. They don't even, not even quite sure where it is, but it's somewhere in the district. But these are people that tried booking two months ago, like the lack of hotel availability, the capacity already, like that's how many tourists are coming to the area. So if the Sayward Valley Farmers Market had a posting and started getting and started doing cross promotion with Destination Campbell River, then all of a sudden the thousands of people that are down in the Campbell River that are visiting would know to come up here on a Saturday morning between 10 and 2 for a good old fashioned farmer's market and they would be blown away by all the great things that are there. So that and again, it's free. <laughs> so why wouldn't you want to take advantage of a free thing? So I'm going to do my best to share all of my 25 years, 27, 27 years of communication skill with anybody who wishes to utilize it to help the raise the level of all of the businesses in Sayward and Sayward Valley so that everybody can be promoted and moving forward and everybody growing the same direction. Perfect. Thank you. You have a question now? You have a, okay, sorry. Go ahead, Councillor Paulson. Um, I'd, I'd just like to speak to your um, statement about the uh, City of Campbell River and the regional districts working together. And I think um, across BC and particularly in Sayward, um, that's one of the areas where the greatest improvement is needed for communication, transparency, openness, welcoming, and that sort of thing, because that hasn't existed. However, the um, organizations that serve the Sayward region don't recognize boundaries. So for instance, um, uh, tourism is um, across the valley, the, the village, the whole region. We don't draw lines and, and, um, and um, tourism has uh, flourished uh, up until COVID hit and there were lots of things going on and then um, that that came to an end. So it's almost like um, since COVID, the whole, the village and the valley have to regroup and come back together. And I, I've seen that happening mm -hmm. with um, a lot of organizations. Um, so, and that, the um, cohesiveness that you speak to about all the different groups working together that was alive and well in Sayward prior to COVID. And whenever there's a, a snow event or a heat event or a, a major accident, everybody comes together and supports each other. I just wish that it could be Christmas every day <laughs> because, you know, that's when people are the m most concerned about everybody else and, and helping out. And just the other comment that I'd like to make is that the CAO's um, credentials in, in uh, tourism over the last few decades are absolutely commendable, the things that he's accomplished and what he's hired to do. But he was hired to represent the and work for the village and do the village work mm -hmm. and <clears throat> a few years ago tourism was handed off at arm's length to the tourism committee so um, i think we need to we need to look at working out a new way that um, uh, tourism and all the different groups can work together with the village and with the valley because that's what it's all about. Um, the municipality and the district 
have a distinct line and we need to erase that line. We need to get rid of it. And that's what we're all working for. So. That's very true. Thank you very much for your presentation. Appreciate it. Um, I'm available at any time if anybody wants to call and if you have questions that come out of tonight's meeting or future meetings, I think everybody has my number. So. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome to stay or. I'm going to stay for a little while. Okay. Um, but I probably won't stay for the whole thing because I have a very long five days ahead of you. <laughs> Understood. Okay. So that was petitions and delegations. Correspondence. We have A. Does anybody want to pull A or we just accept the correspondence? Recommended resolution that we accept correspondence A. Do I have a motion, please? I'll move that. Second. Do we have a second? I'll second that. I'll second that. that sounds good. Discussion? Opposed? All in favor? I gather everybody's in favor. Yes. OK, Councillor Tinsley, there we go. Thank you. <coughs> Council report. It's a verbal report from Councillor Tom Tinsley regarding UBCM conference and potential appointments with Premier Horgan, cabinet ministers and the Minister of Municipal Affairs. Take it away, Councillor Tinsley. Uh, great, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the verbal before, report just basically um, is citing the fact that uh, once again, uh, this coming year in September, the uh, UBCM conference is happening and we have an opportunity to meet with uh, uh, potentially cabinet ministers and other ministers of the government to discuss important issues. Uh, last year, just to recap, we were uh, as a council able to uh, meet with uh, various ministers uh, on uh, whether well, the first two topics are, uh, uh, were uh, uh, the the uh, aging infra infrastructure, sorry, uh, which is a, a primary uh, concern here, and also the uh, implementation of its drainage plan. Uh, so I guess in this verbal report, the suggestion is that we uh, uh, tee it up so that uh, we can meet the, it's actually a June 24th deadline to uh, place requests uh, to potentially uh, have a meeting with one of the ministers. And uh, I guess my suggestion would be that uh, we, uh, uh, move that forward with staff to uh, send in those requests and I would say those two topics are still our number ones. I don't know whether it's possible, uh, maybe the CAO knows, but uh, whether it's possible to address as a second round, sometimes you have to sell things three times uh, <laughs> uh, to address those two primary issues for our, our uh, village. That's the end of my report. Yeah, for Thank you. Um, anybody have a question regarding Councillor Tinsley's report? No, Councillor Polson. Are we open to adding um, suggestions for meetings with other um, provincial um, government? Absolutely, you can suggest whatever. What we're going to do is um, uh, the CEO and I are going to sit down and go through the full list. We already sent in a request for hydro the president of Hydro, because we have to look at some alternatives here for the village. So definitely, if you have suggestions, I would suggest you send them in soon because um, the CAO and I are going to be sitting down within the next two weeks and going over and ensuring that we get all our applications in that we want to see. So if there's something in particular that you're interested in that falls outside of that scope, please send it in. You could email it and this way nobody will forget. Because not saying you're going to forget CAO, but I might. Same uh, same goes to you, Councillor Tinsley. Yes. If you have any suggestions on um, who you would feel be advantageous for us to meet with, then please uh, send an email and bring that forth. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Reports of committees. None. <laughs> Unfinished business. None. Staff reports, committees and portfolios and presentations. What we're going to do is we're going to let the CAO jump in there and then we're going to read the resolution. CAO. Thank you, uh, Mayor. 
So at, at this time, Mayor, I, I think everybody's received the the staff report. Uh, I'm, I'm certainly um, more than happy to to read it if it helps council. Um, but in short, what the staff report uh, entails is sort of a, a call to action to, to address um, what we have in terms of support for council to make decisions. So typically committees are either standing uh, or select committees. Um, standing, of course, being um, mayor driven. Um, select uh, uh, would be council meetings that or sorry, uh, from council um, matters of importance to help uh, make decisions. Uh, from there, you can look at advisory committees uh, similar to uh, what um, what Mary Ruth brought up earlier, like uh, tourism advisory committees, um, different committees uh, made up of uh, public that can help uh, council uh, make informed decisions on important matters. Um, there's a number of recommendations in the staff report um, that uh, that that could be addressed, but really it is up uh, to council to determine um, what issues you may want to look at uh, and what to what uh, committees may be relevant. Uh, you can also form uh, um, uh, in addition to uh, action. Sorry, in addition to uh, committees, you, you can take a look at advisory groups, uh, task forces. There's a, a different uh, number of formats that we can address. Uh, some of the uh, some of the recommendations are starting on page six of the report. Um, a couple of that uh, staff are looking at is infrastructure task force or committees. Um, that one is fairly extensive. Uh, as you know, there's subgroups that could be possible uh, are sewer and wastewater treatment, drinking water and water treatment, linear water, linear sewer, roads, buildings, fleet management. And wharf the wharf is an interesting one because as as we know, that is owned uh, by Sayward Futures. Um, there is certainly a crossover and collaboration there, um, but you know, in uh, as as case in point, if 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 we had engineering studies on that, there is a grant available today, um, up to six million dollars for for funding. Um, emergency preparedness uh, committee is another one that uh, we absolutely do recommend. Um, most communities do have a, a a select committee on emergency preparedness, so that would perhaps uh, subgroups to that could be. Marine emergency and spill response, evacuation routes, roles and responsibilities, and emergency communication strategy. Now we do have um, um, some some people in play already uh, for that, uh, but there is more work to be done uh, in terms of uh, that category. Events committee uh, is something that I think uh, the council should really think about having. Um, this is one where some events that are occurring within the community uh, are uh, addressed by by certain groups. Um, there's other ones that that perhaps could could be looked at. So um, a couple of sub subgroups to this would be Sayward Valley Folk Festival, uh, archives, arts and entertainment focus group, local events uh, focus group. So we, we've got a number of different events that require different sort of levels of organization. Um, these include Oscar Days, which of course does have its own organization committee right now. Um, the Chili Cookoff Tour to Rock is is something that you know different people have been working on today, and the volunteers that were were there sort of yesterday are are, are not available right now. Um, Canada Day, Christmas Day Parade, that's that's typically um, Sayward Futures. Uh, so to take a look at that, uh, Coosan Climb Committee. Now there is there is something um, in terms of a Coosan Climb Committee right now. Um, however. Um, staff have recognized that Kusum climb could be um, um, so much bigger than it is today in, in terms of uh, information out to the island. It's it's very well known and I think um, really putting some 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 uh, some folks uh, who are passionate about that would uh, would benefit that and that could, that event can only grow. Parks and recreation um, staff is proposing that could be a select committee. Subgroups uh, for council's consideration could look like a trail network advisory group, a Kelsey Center advisory group, and certainly a seniors steering committee. Um, senior steering committee is something that we uh, staff feel is, is incredibly important to any community, um, and steering committees are, are of course a representation uh, of a much larger group. Um, so that would help um, council as well as staff make uh, informed decisions about uh, programming and so forth. Uh, on top of that, economic development. Uh, should probably be a, a select committee as well. 
um, there's there's different uh, categories that staff uh, would would have maybe council look at that could be a tourism advisory group uh, accom accommodations task force i mean we recognize that there's lots of accommodation out there uh, between the valley and the village in some cases a lot of people don't know about that so we don't really have a full comprehensive inventory of what that may look like uh, Agritourism Advisory Group, um, we know there's a lot of interest in that by the uh, good work that's going on at the Cable House right now. So I, I think that can only grow. Uh, a WARF Task Force, there is something uh, together already, and Sayward Futures is, is certainly heading that. Uh, Accessibility Task Force is another one that, uh, that Council has brought up in the past and is part of strategic planning. Um, there could be a Boundary Expansion um, Task Force, Housing Task Force. Um, housing, of course, being uh, a very important uh, topic right now for every municipality. Um, building zoning and subdivision uh, task force. Now, task force, uh, I should mention, are created to address certain tasks. And once those tasks are completed, there's a sunset clause and they no longer exist after the task is complete. Uh, Kelsey Bay Waterfront Working Task Force is another one. Uh, climate Change Task Force. Um, that's that's something where again uh, council has um, established in their strategic planning uh, agriculture and local food security task force this is um, a, a lot of this is being addressed already uh, with sayward futures uh, food hub um, there's also we also have a list of, of councillor involvement with different uh, committees and, and groups and some of those um, portfolios at least um, don't necessarily exist in any full and meaningful way. Um, an example of that uh, might be the community garden portfolio. Um, there hasn't really been a meeting uh, there. Uh, so that that's so I, I think there there is cause for council to to take a look at that list and determine uh, if these um, committees or representation are needed and if so, uh, are they running uh, as they should? Uh, obviously, uh, reporting and terms of reference are, are of uh, critical importance when it comes to uh, setup of, of committees and advisory groups. So um, that's the, sort of the executive summary of the, uh, the, the overall report. Um, I, I can tell you that, you know, there, 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 there probably is a, a little bit of um, confusion out there too as to you know what's already set up and what what needs to be set up what's what's currently running what what may be expired uh but i think in the spirit of, of collaboration and working together i i think that uh, um staff would recommend that 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 uh council uh, address sort of what the needs are and work towards um the establishment of of advisory bodies uh, accordingly okay. thank you Mayor. thank you so before we continue with questions we're going to res read the resolution and then we'll get into discussion. So the resolution is that council reviews all committees, groups and representation to determine relevancy and review, discuss and deliberate needs for committees, groups and representation and portfolios. And as well as that a full review of committees and groups represented council representation from council and staff for the drafting of terms of reference, service agreements, and letter of support and contacts and other pertinent documentation. So there is clarification, understanding for both the village and committees, group or representation. Do I have a motion, please? Second? That would be you, Tom. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I second that. Um, thank you. Discussion. OK, now we'll open the floor to discussion. I think where we should start, I mean, that's a lot of information. That's great. A lot of committees or suggestions for task force. But I think what we need to do first and foremost is clean up the groups that we have now. I think is what where we need to set our direction. So, for example, terms of reference with um, with Sabred Futures, with the Tourism Committee, terms and condition, get that straightened out. In terms of in, in my opinion, there's there's a lot of task force and a lot of very good task force that we should be involved with. However, I'm wondering if we're, we're going to need to pick and choose just maybe a top couple because we're running out. I mean, October is a new election and we don't want to start. And then have it finished right away. 
so I think council needs to take a little bit of time individually to decide what they believe and we can bring it back to the June or pardon me, July. Because there's only one meeting in June, correct? And yeah, July. July. So if we bring it back into July meeting, say our top four committees that we want to look at or task force to drive before the election in October from the list that we have given to us tonight. I think that will give everybody ample opportunity to get their feet wet on it. I also would like to see all these agreements and terms of reference and everything else put to bed as quickly as possible. So I would like to see that done um, before um, and brought up to the July meeting as well, because I believe a month would give it enough time to put letters of reference in place and so on and so forth, would it not? CAO? Thank you, Mayor. Um, just just depending. So, um, you know, as as case in point, you, you mentioned Sayward Futures. Sayward Futures would determine sort of if if they are after a service agreement, um, and then that can that can certainly be put together. But I think before, you know, terms of reference and and these sort of different things, um, the council would need to decide on which sort of which committees and and uh, which um, uh, groups should be created. And then at that point, we can work towards terms of reference and establishing those um, those groups. So really the the terms of reference and that sort of thing is the sort of the the, the legal workings after after the determination of of what council wants to see in terms of advisory um, groups. OK. Um, but any group, any group or organization that we're giving money to should have a terms of reference. Is that not correct? Thank you, Mayor. At this time, there is no uh, dollars being funded to any group. OK, Councillor Polson, you had a question. Well, I have several questions, and one of the things that I'm most concerned about is that I find this very confusing. I find it a crossover between what I thought we were discussing tonight was the committees that belong to the municipality and that the councillors are appointed to attend. Yes. So that's that's one. That's how I understood it. However, when I read the um, inclusion of the different community committees, I cannot support that the municipality gets involved in that because um, it it's almost like um, the village is saying that we're going to control all of these committees by expecting them to have terms of reference and service agreements and things like that. And I don't think that that's why those committees have been set up to work in the community. I um, I believe that there are there are several committees that aren't even on this list and they have been set up by community minded people that wanted to make this community a better place for everyone. Uh, not necessarily be. Controlled or run by terms of reference and service agreements and that sort of thing. I'd like to know how many community groups in Campbell River, for instance, have service agreements with their city. Um, I, I think that this discussion should in re revolve around um, the committees that the councillors serve on and whether they're effective or not. That's what I understood this was about. I don't want to enter into a discussion about um, whether Kusum Climb or um, the Heritage Hall or any of those groups um, should, should be manipulated by the district or the village unless those groups are here to represent themselves. I don't think we should be making decisions about the way these um, committees or I, groups are run. I agree. I, I, th I think you're 
I, I think there's a little misunderstanding on, okay. on what content. Is that not correct, CAO? Could you clear that up? Sorry. Um, You're not on, sorry. Sorry, for, for clarity, if if council is to make a decision on any thing from a, um, for example, um, tourism, um, a spend on tourism, um, the, to, to answer Councillor Polson, yes, the, the uh, tourism um, committee in Campbell River certainly has a, a terms of reference with with, uh, with Campbell River because Campbell River ultimately makes the decisions on how those dollars are spent. So there is, as far as I know, no really such thing as a, a committee that uh, has the authority to act uh, on behalf of a municipality without a service agreement in place. Now, that's not to say that that committees don't exist um, in, in communities. Of course they do. Um, the, the Legion is its own entity. Sayward Futures is its own entity. Um, they can choose, though, to enter into service agreements if they are providing a service to village or, or valley. Um, there is really no such thing as an independent committee that makes decisions and has the authority to speak on behalf of village or valley or municipality with without clear and legal uh, understanding. And right. so um, these things do exist so so that council can make informed decisions um, on um, governance. Thank you. Yeah, something like um, for the tourism committee, for example, if we're going to continue to fund it, it's going to represent the municipality as well as the SRD, then the SRD and the municipality need to have a working agreement with that. No different than um, economic development is generally something that is also falls under the category of the municipality. It does in every other municipality as well. It's not just unique to us. So other groups like the, some of the suggestions or Kusum client, they have their own thing. If they want some cross promotion with the municipality or they're looking for funding or anything else like that in the future, then anything we do give money to should be terms of reference. Not not us trying to control every committee group that's out there. That's not what that's not what this is about. What it is about is for us to take control on some things uh, or be a part of, especially if we're giving money to, there has to be the reporting. There has to be the terms of reference in place. There has to be a um, guided by council on the direction that that wants to go. So that would fall under tourism and economic development is generally something that falls under the municipalities and all the municipalities that I've spoken to. Um, Sayward Futures is its own entity. Um, but what we need to do is we need to look at our current list. Like, for example, um, of course, we have to have representation from Strathcona Regional District, which we do. That's on page five for everybody. So we also have, um, and Councillor Polson is. Uh, page six is revised after uh, Sir Craig. Page six is revised. OK, so you have um, Strathcona Regional District, which I cover Comox Regional Hospital Board, which um, Councillor Polson Is the lead on that and you don't have a backup. I thought we established that. But I thought I was the backup on that. OK. Yeah, that's not updated. OK, so I'm the update there. Um, no different than the waste. I was the backup on the waste as well. Uh, the Mid Island Forest Lands Advisory Group. Um, I haven't seen any emails or documentation or anything from them. My flag? Sorry? My flag? Is that where you're? The Mid? Yes. I've been attending. You've been attending? Yeah. But no. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm just going. I'll just get you the updated list. OK, so one of the things that, that we're we also we're all sort of falling down on the job on is reporting from the groups that we are at. If we're not coming to council on a regular basis. Um, generally, as we talked about before, I don't report anything from the SRD unless it directly affects Sayward. And I believe Councillor Polson said the same thing regarding the regional health and the waste management. But maybe we need to start doing just little blurbs 
just little hits once a month to show that we're actually involved in those committees. Now the Mid Island Forest was um, sorry, Norm Kirshner, like the garden, the garden committee. Is that something that's driven by the municipality or is that just? Yes, it was. So I think so the school has it now. One year contract, so that's no longer needs um, any representation from council, correct? <clears throat> okay. Um, so that's out. Councillor Kirshner is appointed to the community gardens. That's out. Sorry. Uh, Councillor Tinsley is uh, appointed to the Sayward um, Community Tourism Committee. So can I just? And I, I am the alternate. Can I go sorry, ahead? Mr. Mayor? Go ahead. So, Tom. I think we need to agree that the the four that we're discussing are listed on page six. They need to stay just as decided Strathcona, Strathcona Regional District Hospital. Those are basically solid ones. Everything else is a blank sheet, a, a yes. blank sheet. We are starting from square one here. Everything is where are we going to move forward? And we have the five recommendations uh, from staff which I would agree with, of very important issues that need to be addressed. And I, I, so uh, I think as long as we agree on these four, which we have, um, uh, what we're looking at is these five other key recommendations and deciding to move forward on those. And then we move to, uh, uh, if we choose one or all five, uh, then we move to how those interrelate with various organizations, communities, organizations, <clears throat> whether uh, okay, and, so you know, we have we have limited funds, so you know this, but but you know that seems to me the way that we're moving forward. Everything is blank slate, right? Well, this is where we determine, as I said, we pick our top, you know, let's say the top four <laughs> or five, if you're yeah. more comfortable with that, and we decide what we're going to give money to, what we need reference terms of reference for and what yeah. needs to be accountable to council. Yeah, so, so our, I mean, in terms of just basic working committees, that is something that maybe can be just suggested by the municipality for groups, but that's not something that we're not going to all of a sudden go out and start 10 task groups. We don't have yeah. the manpower. We yeah. don't have the people and it's unrealistic for all of us to think that we're going to be involved in all these different organizations. Correct. In my yeah. Opinion. yeah, yeah, we're just looking at do we agree okay. with the infra, like the infrastructure? So, task force, right. Well, let's let's take a look at that. Sorry. I have to. Those are just suggestions, right? Right. Those are just suggestions. Yeah. Sure. Um, under the um, current list of boards and groups that staff do not feel do not need adjustment. I think um, ice tea is not listed under that. Yeah, ice tea is something that um, I'm appointed on. It should be. Okay. It's always been and that they meet only. Once every four months to <laughs> six months. It's ice tea and that's something that I have. And also I wonder about um, Councillor Tinsley's recent appointment to the ESS committee represented. Representation. I'm sorry, ESS. Emergency services. Your concern. I'm sorry. He's not on. It's not on the list. It's not a committee. It's a position. Yeah, it's a position, not a committee. He would definitely <clears throat> be on a committee. If so. There's a, there's one of the suggestions is that committee that he would be okay. on. Okay. That'd be one of the suggestions. Uh, emergency preparedness committee number two. If that if that came to light. Then Tom would be, or Councillor Chensley would be a part of that. Now, but let's look at let's look at Sabred Futures, for example. Uh, Sabred Sabred Futures is um, is not part of uh, or or designed to answer to um, the municipality. Correct. We don't give any money to Sabred Futures. No, I'm just asking the question. Um, we don't give any monies to Sabred Futures. No. OK, so Sabred Futures should not have council representation 
and anything that comes from Sabred Futures, you could bring to the table if there's an ask. In 2000. In now I'm speaking on behalf of Sabred Futures. So what does that leave me? Um, well, it's as long as we don't vote. OK, because okay. otherwise it's a conflict yeah. okay. of interest. It's <clears throat> yeah, it's so. Um, in 2015 at our no, sorry, 2017, I believe it was at our AGM. We passed two bylaws um, to. Um, <clears throat> under the directors include one appointed director from the municipality to sit on the Sayward Futures um, board. And there's um, in the constitution, there's um, information about what, what they can do and what whether they can vote or not, or sit on the executive. And that was because the village wanted and Sayward Futures wanted to enter into a collaborative agreement to work on economic development. So that's how the um, bylaws got changed and that's why it um, since then has had an appointee from the municipality sitting on the Sayward Futures board and it was it was for um, transparency and collaboration and sharing information back and forth because a lot of times things were happening. Different entities were working on economic development. Um, for instance, uh, there was one group that was working on um, getting a play group, or, or a, sorry, a, a daycare set up. And yeah. There was a counselor who went to an economic de development con convention and found that there was money available to look into building a, a, um, a daycare in Sayward. So when that happened, when he brought that back to council, there was a big uproar by the private group that was looking at doing it because now the village was going to take over the you know what the private group was doing. So in order to be aware of what um, different groups were doing, we decided to, and that's when Sayward Futures started attending, being invited to the cow meetings that approximately six weeks to two months to talk about different, um, different um, projects or ideas or things that were coming up. And it was in, um, September of 2019 that Alex Turner from Sayward Futures um, um, organized on behalf of Sayward Futures, organized a um, an economic development committee and they met up until March of 2020 and then that. Um, and there was a, a representative from uh, Mr. Ives was there from the village and there were several um, entrepreneurs in the community and people that were looking at um, business development in the in the village. So that's how it came that Sayward Futures had um, a counselor appointed to the board. OK, so economic development is usually spearheaded by the municipality, mm -hmm. so if it's spearheaded by the municipality, but an arm of Sabred Futures does not. It, it wasn't an arm. It's not an arm, it's no. not a leg. No, it finger. was a collaboration with Sayward Futures and the municipality. OK, so economic development is still under the municipality yep. is what yep. because there is no there is no working group at this point. It disbanded in 2020, you were saying? From Mr. Turner, the the economic development committee. Yes, which was the collaborated group of. OK. The. Sayward Futures and the municipality, okay. so. Do you have a comment? Um, <laughs> sorry, no, I I, I was just going to say that there there isn't currently and this is just for for uh, councils uh, information. 
there isn't currently a uh, working agreement or terms of reference for any um, committee. Any group. Any group, period. Right. So, so at, at this point in time, inquiries are handled by staff uh, within the village. Okay. So we need to term some of the some of the things that we need to clear up today, for example, is um, the term of reference uh, for what the municipality is directly involved with. So that would be with um, tourism, for example, which would fall under the municipality and economic development. Would it not CAO? Sorry, uh, Mayor, it's, um, I, guess, I guess this this comes back to what, uh, if I can just reply back to Councillor Tinsley, this is, would be for um, obviously the third party groups that, that Council is attending now, no change needed there. But um, as, as Councillor Tinsley has mentioned, there is a clean slate here to establish um, mm -hmm. the priorities for for the, the municipality and then what that looks like in terms of possible advisory groups standing in select committees. So you, in terms of reference is essentially your very last task um, to complete because that is just no, I, drawing. I understand yeah. that. Okay. No, Thank I you. understand that. What I'm saying is we're not going to um, we're not going to get a terms of reference or work towards that with Kusum Klein. We need to pick what we're going to fund and what we're going to be involved with. Is that not correct? Uh, that's for that's for council to to take Decide. a look at. So if right. if if there's if if council decides that you know they would they would like more involvement or see Kusum Climb as an example grow, um, I would recommend them that reaching out with the existing committee on that and to see how that collaborative process can result in perhaps a um, greater and, and bigger uh, function uh, by working collaboratively together. So again, this is all comes down to what what council deems as priorities um, going forward. OK, so to me. Tourism and economic economic development are a priority. Does anybody disagree? Councillor Tinsley, um, as much as I love those areas, I, I pretty much go with the order that the one to five are listed here. Infrastructure is the number one. Emergency planning is the number two. Um, if you want to bump economic up to number three, that's fine, but I, I'm comfortable with all five of these. I think we need to agree on these five main areas or three or four or whatever. But I would say number one is the infrastructure. That, that big train's coming down the track. <clears throat> okay, but however, how what would that look like when you're looking at an infrastructure task force? Well, I think it's, uh, this, what would this that is my understanding like? anyway, is, is that the task force is, is taking a lot of uh, the things into consideration so that it takes a little bit of the load off the staff. Um, uh, and and the same with, uh, so that the staff isn't fielding as many calls around it. There's a committee involved in looking at that. Um, that would be one example. Um, I mean, the key is to agree on these key areas. We've already got the ones we talked about, the four that we, we're gonna, we have to be on still. We're a small community. We've got five listed here. Uh, I would say infrastructure and emergency are number one and two is listed. Um, and then we get into what the other ones are. And and it's sort of like deciding on these key areas. We can only have so many committees. There's only so much time, only so much people. And then we look at, then those committees look at how they're going to connect on the various issues relative to their their area. Okay. <clears throat> but in, in my opinion, if we take something like um, economic development and tourism, and put it to the bottom of the list. We're doing ourselves a disservice. What I'm not a huge so let's, disservice in the community. Yeah, so I'm not saying it shouldn't be on the you, you can put it number one, but I would say out of these five that are listed here, whether they're one, two, the three most important ones are are uh, infrastructure, emergency prep, and economic development. I can see okay, us which tourism falls underneath. Yeah, tourism falls under economic okay. development. Yeah. Right, but I think you got to so have those because they can coexist at the same time. They can coexist at the same time. Correct. Uh, tourism, you mean, and economic development. Well, for example, the infrastructure committee can exist at the same time as a tourism committee. Yes, because yes. you're attracting different people, different people yes. and different wants and different skill sets to yes. those committees. Correct. Yes, correct. These are big themes. Sorry, right? CAO. Right. 
Thank yeah. you, Mara. I just wanted to point out that um, it's 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 important to keep in mind that task forces um, committees don't necessarily have to be members of the community. So these things are are groups of of people that have expertise to help you. So obviously, a tourism committee would involve businesses from the community. Of course, it would. However, when you talk infrastructure, that may not be the case. So um, I would say that uh, advisory on per getting getting public feedback on, as an example, drainage is uh, going to be a part of the process. However, uh, I don't see that um, um, council would rely on just uh, community involvement for some of these bigger um, um, roads, as an example. Uh, this could be made up of industry professionals to to advise council on. So unpaid or paid. Um, well, that that is also open for discussion, but I will say to Council Tinsley's point, um, in the infrastructure side of things is in a in a fairly decent place right now. So what I mean by that is um, we have gone to RFP for engineering. Um, the dam project is um, should be completed this year. Uh, linear water and linear sewer are being addressed by study uh, this year. Um, roads is not even an issue until, of course, sewage and 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 linear water is is looked at, Correct. and we've applied to a uh, grant for buildings um, and asset management, which fleet management is part of that. So all of that for now is in good hands. So if we are looking at, you know, what what are the essentials? Uh, to Councillor Tinsley's point, um, yes, infrastructure is our biggest uh, glaring issue. However. Um, that one, for at least now, is is in decent hands. Thank you. Yeah, that report is going forward. But however, one of the things that under infrastructure is the sewer and wastewater treatment. We're not going to do aquaculture unless we have our water treated, our sewage treated. Because you cannot put, you can't have sell, shellfish or or seaweed growing in this area because of our waste water going directly into the ocean. So. But that again is professionals and not done by the average Joe in the community. Correct? And that's underway now. Is that not correct from McElhaney or the RFP has gone out for the master drainage, for the master infrastructure plan that we're looking at? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, the RFP, uh, RFP is out. Uh, McElhaney has been awarded the master water and sewage capacity. Thank you. Okay, because without that basic foundation, we cannot apply for grants. OK, so Councillor Polson, um, do you agree that um, the number one group that we should be looking at is infrastructure task and followed by emergency preparedness and then economic development? This three, I believe that this is a cow meeting and that we can't be making decisions tonight. We can see if we're on the same page or any other suggestions, can we not? No. Well, you, well, you, you asked can. me if I agreed okay. and we're making it if I'm making a decision and I'm saying I'm not prepared to answer at a cow meeting when okay. decisions are not made. I, I, under discussion. I understand that. I'm asking you if you see number four being your priority or number five. It's a question of Councillor Tinsley put out one, two and three, and I'm asking your opinion on it. Not we're deciding on it today. I'm asking your opinion. I would agree that the um, the first two are um, the most important, which is infrastructure and emergency preparedness. Okay, so it's up to discussion for three, four, and five. Is that correct? For a debate or a discussion later at another meeting. To give you time to review. I, 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 I think we also have to just like we have to decide if even five is possible at this point in time. You know, these are these are key areas They're We're listing what we want, think we should move forward on and these big themes. Um, and. To your point, there's an election coming up. That's there's only so much capacity, so. Well, yeah, I mean, we're not going to take number five and, for example, all of a sudden come up with um, 14 different working groups no. for that. But under five, economic development, you have your tourism, 
um, which yeah. is huge, right? Accommodations. Yeah. One of the things um, that I, I was called yesterday on, and they're sending me an email, is that 360 Yacht, yacht Club that mm -hmm. goes around. Uh, they now uh, are looking for a venue. So they were calling and asking whether or not they could use our wharf and our marina for the overnight for next year in 2023. Now, part of that is giving them a list of accommodations as well, or B&Bs in the areas because there's going to be over 300 people. So having a list of accommodations and B&Bs or um, rooms that can be rented is important. I mean, the this the task force for the wharf. I mean, that's Sayward Futures, and that I believe is going to be their responsibility to get together. Is that not correct? Sorry, Sayward Future has ownership of the wharf, so ultimately, yes, right. uh, it's I, their responsibility. I, I will say though that there's lots of crossover on that, and. Um, so something I was going to add is for for council's review is I, I would also um, factor in one more thing when we're determining importance of these particular issues and and that would be a available funding. So case in point right now, I'm, I'm racing towards the finish line on some of the infrastructure because there is a, a sizable grant that's 100% funded. And so I, I am racing towards that. Um, the importance is being shelf ready for these things. So, um, you know, to, to that point, say we're futures um, uh, and also apply for this same same grant uh, up to six million, um, 100 percent funded, but all the engineering and reports have to be done. So when we're looking at different um, priorities of different groups or, or particularly um, um, uh, task force, um, some of that would be in and around funding and urgencies in terms of timelines. So uh, again, um, I want to emphasize that infrastructure is indeed, um, uh, for the municipality at least, a major issue, but not necessarily a 911 in terms of committees. No, because you already got a handle in that direction. That's right. So perhaps there's just too much information. So, so we could leave inter infrastructure then. We don't need a committee for what the CAO just said. Right no. now, we don't need a committee. It's no, under we do not. So we can cross that off. That's correct. OK. Correct. So yeah. then we're down. I, to I'd just like to say. Sorry, hang on a second. Councillor Paulson. I would just like to say that this takes us back to the um, reasonableness for having um, collaboration with Sayward Futures and the village or around economic development. And so um, sitting here as a councillor tonight and hearing that there's $3 million available for infrastructure at the wharf or grants available at oh, 06. OK, thanks. <laughs> and there's been no collaboration about that. It's the first I've heard about it. So um, there's a breakdown in communication and collaboration and um, openness as far as I can see. So I think that we need to have I think we need to have that representation on Sayward Futures board, and I think Sayward Futures needs to continue to um, attend the cows when they're held, when it's when economic development is being talked about, and um, this. And how do you do that when you're on council and you're the chair of? So you would have some another I'm individual. Not the, I'm not the village. I'm not the no, uh, municipal representative. No, but the. I, I see there being an issue with. We need better communication. <laughs> Mary Ruth is just dying here to say something, yep, she but can't, however, though. she can't. That's correct, CAO. Oh, sorry. Thank you. I I, I, uh, I would agree. Uh, collaboration with Sayward Futures is is definitely warranted. And you know, another example of that, uh, of course, would be events. So which which events are covered, and and what resources would be required, and you know, is there road closures or assets required? Um, so there, there's lots to think about, and yeah. uh, and um, ultimately, you know, uh, for council to approve. 
Okay, so instead of uh, going back on our past again, from this day forward, let's have far better communication from the municipality to Sayward Futures and Sayward Futures to the municipality. So for example, if an event does come up like uh, the Christmas parade, that's something that should be brought to council as well. Okay, but if, if Sayward Futures is the mall, it, for us to know, to us to know is good. If we're not involved in that and to know, especially if we're going to close down roads, we have to talk to the fire department on that. Are you done? Is there more you wanted to add? No, uh, no. So aren't we? Okay, back so we need to, we need to improve our communication, which means what? Sorry, CAO. Sorry, yeah, yes. I'm getting I, a little frustrated. Maybe you could tell. Yeah, I, I, I think really what it comes down to is what are these groups? Um, so, for example, if if we really look at it, the wharf is is an incredible asset for Sayward. Ultimately, it's got ownership of Sayward Futures. So, really, that part has to be figured out. Like what I guess, so to speak, is what is it that um, you know, Sayward Futures is, and 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 what elements of Sayward Futures is crossed over to the municipality, and then once that portion is figured out, and then the terms of reference and and so forth can be as clearly established. And terms of reference can identify, um, um, you know, information on grant sharing. Um, it, 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 there there can be a whole collaboration there, but but right now it's 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 unclear. It's a, and and I apologize if I if I can speak on behalf of. You know, just my position, I uh, and 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 uh, I can actually own this. Is that perhaps I, I should have been more communicative? But I don't at this time know what Sayward Futures is. Um, um, in terms of is it is it meant to be an economic engine? Is it uh, tourism? Is it um, what what is the overall desire of Sayward Futures in terms of um, the municipality? Um, I, I can tell you that I, I did take the liberty when I was when I was kind of deep diving into this uh, of reaching out with Director Wally as an example and, and did create terms of reference that both the municipality and the region, um, uh, so the valley are, are um, I would say, worked collaboratively to come with a terms of reference. Um, so it is a document waiting there if, if there is a tourism committee that wants to embrace it. So it, you can have a tourism committee that operates by itself. You can have that. Um, but if it's advising council and mayor so that they can make decisions, then there there has to be an agreement in place. I understand that. Yeah. And I don't think that's a debate. If if a tourism committee or any other committee is being funded in or saying that they're part of the municipality, there has to be a terms of reference in place and a reporting system. If we're giving money, sorry, if they exist to to provide information to council to make decisions, then there's a terms of reference. It, it, it okay. whether it's funded by the municipality or not is 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 a choice of council. And in in some cases there is funding. In other cases, it might be purely advising. Okay, so what's the next step going forward? What are you asking for for Sabred Futures? What are you asking from them? Sorry, I, I'm not asking anything of Sayward Futures. It would be for council to, uh, uh, and Sayward Futures, I guess, to collaboratively, uh, um, uh, if if they wish to have an agreement in place um, for either advising or um, empowerment on on certain um, uh, items to to um, discuss a, a, what that may look like. But you don't understand what Sayward Futures really is. So maybe there needs to be a presentation done stating or a one on one meeting that uh, Sayward Futures should have with the CAO to get or us to find out exactly what the role of Sayward Futures has been and is and what the future is. Would that be helpful? Yeah, sorry. So the CAO is not empowered to make decisions, but purely I'm asking it, it would be helpful, uh, I believe, for council to um, learn uh, about Sayward Futures, yes. So for Sayward Futures to present to council would be ideal in my mind. Um, but okay. Yes. So we can ask Sayward Futures to do a presentation and say exactly <coughs> what it is. Okay, what it so, is, what it does, what the goals are. 
Councillor Tinsley. So th this is all part of the minutia after we've decided economic yeah. development as a committee, right? So whether it's Sayward Futures or any of these other groups, the key is we decide we're going to have an economic development committee. And then it's what, no. uh, how are we connecting with a Sayward Futures, another group, the Cusum Klein group, whatever. How does that committee work with them? Though that's the next steps, right? I mean, there's so just to use an example, um, economic development. Uh, I was quite surprised to hear, you know, when Mary Ruth mentioned that there hasn't been the kind of uptake for the, I'll call it a pipe that's been developed, the web stuff coming out of Campbell River, which is like, that's almost like, I don't know why that's not happening on our end. So in an economic development committee, that would be part of their working with groups or directly with uh, Campbell River to ensure that our businesses are aware of this free offer, that type of thing. You know, that's that's a simple example of how uh, we need to uh, move forward. And that's an, a simple example of how an economic development committee would look at that thing. Sayward Futures is one part of uh, that whole picture, right? So I think we need to decide on these, these right. big ones here, right? Economic development, okay, we're done. Then we deal with the other ones. And we've got to look at, okay, if emergency paradise is going to be there, fine, we've agreed on that. Okay, right? but hang I, I agree, Councillor Tinsley, but again, this information is going to be brought forward to a council meeting that it can actually be voted on. We're not yes. making that decision at this point, we're just doing no, the discussion. No. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I I agree with voting on an economic development committee being needed, and I would agree with uh, a voting. You know, I'm I'm suggesting that we should be voting on having emergency preparedness that can always be added to. It's already covered by the current EPC position and the ESS volunteers and the Strathcona Regional District to a degree, but if any any extra work in that area is is valuable, uh, so. Okay. You know, I guess I'm trying Sorry, to get a fact. Yeah, we're just going to write down that information before we go on. CAL? Yes, thank you, uh, Mayor. To, to Councillor Tinsley's point, uh, I, I would say that uh, another thing that Council may want to decide upon is perhaps you, you want to you want to put this process off uh, until your strategic plan is is something that you're you're building, um, because really your strategic plan will will establish priorities, and from priorities, you can build your committees. So that is another thing that can be done. And if council chooses to do that, then we would resolve the immediate. So the immediate is is there is still tourism inquiries coming in. So what does that look like? Uh, what is what is the role of of Sayward Futures, and 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 is there um, um, the need for a service agreement or clarity. Um, so th those are sort of the 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 immediate items. Um, so that that is another approach that that could be done. Um, up to council. Perhaps that makes more sense given that there's an election coming up, right? Well, some of the things that are happening right now that we can't ignore until after the election is going to be, um, for example, tourism, right? We're right into the heat of it. Uh, that's not something that can be just wait till next year. I think it's something that we need to address at the next council meeting. We need to make a decision whether we're going to go forward with uh, tourism um, under the, um, is it under the umbrella of uh, Seaward Futures? Okay. And then if it is under the umbrella of Seaward Futures, then I think a terms of reference, correct me if I'm wrong, with Seaward Futures relating strictly to tourism is the direction we could go, is that not? Yeah, I, I guess I... The answer is, yeah, we need to address tourism for sure. Um, I, I, I don't know if there's a, a full committee at this time. Um, I don't know about who's on the committee. Uh, I don't know if the representation is there. Uh, I don't know. Um, I would need clarity from council as to what kind of working agreement you would want um, with um, current or developing tourism committee. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if 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 council wishes to um, if 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 indeed tourism um, is under the umbrella of Sayward Futures, then then obviously service agreements need to be visited um, and, and definitely there has to be some kind of understanding of, of how that works. Um, but it could be subcategory into tourism and economic development, correct? It, it, it can, um, pro provided that 
you know, council is diligent in ensuring that um, ad, ad, the um, advisory to help make informed decisions is is doing that. The reporting is is in place. So y yes, um, because we don't need as a municipality to be involved in everything that Sabred Futures does. We can narrow that down to a couple of points. Correct. That's that's a difficult difficult one to answer because you know it, if if council is giving away empowerment to anybody, uh, whether it's a committee or Sayward Future or anybody uh, for that matter, there there would have to be clarity in terms of terms of reference and and so forth. But typically, these are advisory groups um, that advise council to make decisions. Correct. They bring yep. the information to council, say this is their recommendation, and we decide whether or not to go forward. That's right. OK, are you talking about a tourism committee? Yes. Or economic development. The reason the tourism committee came under the umbrella of Sayward Futures is because as a committee, they did not have executive power, so they needed an umbrella to manage their finances and Sayward Futures took on that role and the finances of the Tourism Committee are completely separate from Sayward Futures. Okay, and uh, some of the monies that were paid, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong, but of the $2,200, $200 went to the Sayward Futures for the accounting, is that correct? For the administration fee, and that was written in the letter from the CAO of the day. Right, and that is that has expired. Is that not correct? Mm -hmm. So these are things that we need to visit, and we need to get up to. It needs to be up to date. Mm -hmm. And I think you need to hear from the tourism committee whether that's the route they want to go, or do they want to be a regional tourism entity, um, servicing, providing service to the village and the valley to the whole region, which is what they have historically done without any financial support from the uh, regional district um, to the point where the... Um, or the municipality. Well, it was, it, it only, it started to get support from the municipality when the municipality made it an arm's length committee from the the uh, council from the municipality. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure how Councillor Tinsley feels, but tourism <clears throat> to me, <clears throat> excuse me, needs to be still fall under the municipality. And so does economic development. Um, I think it needs to be. I don't, what do you think, uh, Councillor Tinsley? What? I think we're kind of talking the same talk, except the my understanding. I don't the think so. The economic development committee, if there is one, or that function of council <clears throat> would be working with bodies, uh, a, a Sayward Futures uh, in a, in different capacities or whatever, but to try and ensure that the interests of the village, we only have control over the village, but so if it's a tourism committee, which is not of the council. It's a separate organization, as Councillor Paulson mentioned, uh, covering village and valley. Uh, it's a separate entity. <clears throat> um, that economic development within the within the village and the council would be the ones going to that organization or other organizations. And to use a simple example, asking Kusum Climb why they aren't using the uh, Campbell River uh, destination tourism thing, you know, or, or what are, you know, can we get businesses promoted, that type of thing. So it's the facilitator, right? Whether it be a Sayward Futures or a Kusum Climb, the Economic Development Committee of the Council of the Village is going them to, you know, to them and trying to work with them so they can use their skills and volunteers to help everyone's interest, right? Like CAO? Oh, sorry, Tommy. No, it's Councillor Tinsley, you're not done? Uh, no, I'm done. Thanks. Sorry to cut you off. Oh, okay. okay. I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry. Thank you, Mayor. I, 
um, I think everybody's right. So I, I think um, tourism has to be a regional approach because we are Stayward Valley. And the trick is, though, it's always going to be a little bit divided in terms of you need approvals from different bodies. They're different governments. So those approvals have to come from different sources. Um, I, I think we have an excellent working relationship with um, Director Wally. So I, I don't see that as a challenge. Uh, I think the current terms of service that that can be uh, terms of reference, sorry, um, that's been drafted with with um, uh, Director Wally uh, fits the bill for a short term uh, until Council um, reviews sort of what this looks like. And to to Councillor Tinsley's point, yeah, I mean, Sayward Sayward Futures is, is is certainly an element of economic development, but there's a long list here, and so. Um, you know, I think that's all, all that's all gets established um, by that final process. But um, I, I think, you know, thinking about tourism sort of globally uh, as 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 Sayward Valley it is right and good because there's too much crossover. We have an estuary that 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 impacts both. We've got Kusum Climb, which impacts both. We've got um, rooms um, and, and different rec sites that that will obviously um, uh, um, reflect uh, both communities working together on. And and that's the only thing. That's the only way we're we're going to get it done. Um, that said, um, all, all it takes is a little bit of extra diligence with working with two governments to to, to do these approvals based on um, advisory committees or, or so forth. The recommendation. There's there's a lot of passionate people in the community, uh, both communities um, that that I think have a lot of value. There's also a lot of industry experts that are, are more than willing to help out. Um, I've I've been speaking quite a bit with Destination Campbell River, and uh, they're. As an example, there's a there's a 30 point report um, coming our way, so there's there's some good things happening. Um, I understand that the community is meeting quite a bit at, at Cable House, which is in the valley, of course. And you know, there's there's lots of different people there that 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 are, are passionate and and want to play their part. The trick is 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 now is you know what are those parts and uh, how do we move this um, along first on a, on a on a short term. So what do we need to address today? Um, just to, to firm things up so we're all moving in the same direction. And then let's let's start thinking about our overall strategic plan uh, after that would be would be my okay. recommendation. So what do we need to address today that we haven't addressed already? Uh, if, it, if, if the question is specifically around tourism, then then yes, that would be the, the roles that everybody plays, um, uh, prioritizing things up and and um, you know it just even the basic questions. So, um, who's doing what and, and, and do those do those uh, groups sort of uh, are, are they functioning right now as a snapshot today? So the tourism committee um, say word futures, what are, what are they working on right now? Because what I, I feel is happening is there is both overlap and gaps occurring today. So because uh, of lack of communication. Yeah, well, largely that. So, you know, a good example of that is is uh, uh, a member of the <laughs> the galley that's here today, I had an excellent conversation with uh, a lot of passion about, um, you know, trails and signage, but some of those projects are already underway with the municipality. So I think, you know, tightening that up mm -hmm. right now would be like what? Um, sorry for trails and um, the municipality is doing what with trails? Sure. Yeah, you bet. Uh, I just recently had a meeting with uh, Nature's Trust. Nature's Trust is okay, under yes. undergoing all the work in the uh, bird sanctuary. Uh, and and uh, also spearheading some signage in that in that area, so there would not be a need for um, anybody else to address that. Um, and and quite quite um, quite directly speaking, there isn't possibility for others to address that in those areas because the stewardship is squarely on Nature's Trust and and the uh, Comox Nation uh, Guardian. So um, so no no dollars are needed there. Uh, for those two specific reasons, the regions. Go ahead, Councillor Paulson. Turn off your mic. Uh, um, Sayward Futures and the Tourism Committee is well aware that Nature's Trust um, does not permit any other entity on their land. And we have um, found that they have not been very um, forthcoming in either doing the work or letting us know that they're doing the work. We have certainly um, let them know previously that there is work needed to be done. So I'm really glad that you've had 
um, meetings with them and you've established a relationship. But I think um, to say that um, there's there's no uh, other tourism is uh, trails and and signage is not necessary in there. We're already aware of that. So I think there's lots of things like you say gaps and overlaps that that we need to come together with the different groups and have a bigger discussion about what we do, who we are, um, what we what we hope to accomplish, and um, also with the um, for instance, the um, the guardians that are here from Comox First Nations, I contacted them. Pers I sent a letter to um, Nicole Rempel last summer, early in the summer, and asked her if the people in Sayward that were interested in clearing trails could go on their land and clear the um, the um, Kusum. Uh, Trail, Port Kusum Trail, and I never did get an answer from her, and we never did go and attempt to clear that trail. It was an offering on our part to be involved in it. So I think there's lots of um, uh, gaps and lack of communication. So it's um, okay. Yep. Can, can I just relative? To, sorry, can I speak? Go ahead, Councillor Tinsley. So relative to what I would call low hanging fruit uh, in terms of uh, the short term and is moving forward with uh, getting uh, all the things that uh, connection with uh, destination Campbell River, as Mary Ruth described, uh, going, you know, that that's almost seems to be a, a no brainer right now that we can address in a very short term. Correct. Uh, that's tourism. Yes, correct. Yeah, those are things we can boom, 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 do in the short term. Get that that out there so businesses know they can take advantage of that. It's win win for everyone. It's a win win for Campbell River. It's a win for us. It's a win for the Nature's Trust, even right. So I think what we need to do is we need to get Sayward Futures to do a presentation. We need to establish where the tourism is going to fall. The CAO needs to understand, and all of council needs to understand exactly what Sayward Futures is, and what we're doing going forward. Uh, what we're doing, uh, whether or not tourism is going to uh, do a presentation to us as well, the, the current tourism board, or yeah, I know you're here, but however, that's not quite the process. So you just have to hold off. Okay. Pardon me? Was he invited to speak? Okay. Sorry. So, when would be a, a good time for Sabred Futures to do a presentation to Council? I know things are a little hectic right now. June 3rd, next week. Is it a June 3rd? 14th? Fairly extensive. That's okay. Um, but but uh, I would... Sorry, uh, a presentation from I, I'm. If if Sayward Futures wishes a presentation uh, on that meeting, um, just send me an email. And I'm happy to put that on the agenda. Not, not part of the process. Or... Hey, sorry, people in the um, in the gallery are only allowed to speak during our at the end of the question period. You're allowed to make comments then because you'll be asked whether or not you have any questions, but during the council meeting or during the meeting itself, there can't be public input unless you're a delegation. Sorry, pardon me. Well, I was just going to say question period is near the end. That's it is at the end. Yes. OK, so what are we doing going forward? What are we bringing to the council meeting on the 14th? We're doing a, getting a presentation done by Sabred Futures. Correct. We're looking at uh, going forward and we need a presentation from tourism. Or we need a discussion to happen, a meeting with tourism. The current tourism board. 
Anybody can jump on in there. Sorry, I was I was going to say that um, I believe there's a motion for. Um, there's no motion. Uh, sorry, just earlier I believe there was a. Um, sorry, no, there can't be a motion, of course, but uh, I believe that there was a decision. There can't even be a decision. No, I believe that council discussed um, July for. Um, okay. For an agenda item uh, to be brought back after uh, council has had the opportunity to read the staff report and uh, think about the committees and that sort of thing. So I, I think that that sounded to me like it was it was something that um, so was, it was a good timeline. How do you, okay. So how between do you, now and July, is there an opportunity um, that we can say to the tourism to be to give us some information and have that conversation as well between now and then? Or did you want to do Sayward Futures uh, in in June? I believe that there was talk about yes. uh, potential presentation, and I think from um, from Sayward Futures, um, then uh, Council could then think about a uh, uh, presentation from uh, the Tourism Committee as it stands today. Okay. Would would be my recommendation. Again, this is entirely up to Council. Perhaps yep. perhaps they wish to hear from both well, parties in June. No, I think um, how long do you figure a presentation from us uh, from Sacred Futures would be? So we'll just do the one and we'll do the second presentation from tourism in July. And then we can make a decision on how we're going to go from there. But we'll bring that up at the next council meeting for a resolution to make this happen or not. OK, so at the next council meeting, we're going to bring forth that we're going to um, scratch number one on this list completely. Is that correct? Yes, because number one was the infrastructure. We're going to look at economic development and uh, emergency preparedness committees. Correct. Yes. CEO. Yes, I would I would agree that council would be looking at short term solutions as priority for this coming meeting. <clears throat> OK. So the recommended resolution is that. Um, we already did that. Of course, there is no well, yes, there is. You can vote. So after full review of the committees and group presentation, council direct staff to do the drafting of terms of reference. That is not applicable at this point. Correct. So we are scratching that port and we're just going into groups, presentations, representations and portfolios. And we had the motion that was discussion. So all in favor? Opposed? Carried. OK, so in terms of um, we're going to come up with a recommended um, a review on the committees in terms of uh, for Sayward Futures and Tourism and Economic Development at the next council meeting, correct? We are not going to go forward with some of these other committees. We're staying to the, for now, where is it all? You get it all messed up. I'm sorry? Yeah, we're going to keep, um, the boards and the committees that we've already been assigned. Now, one of the things that we're going to have to check on the committees that apparently we're supposed to be having, um, like flag and so on and so forth. Jason's been attending because, pardon me, CAO has been attending because Councillor Kirstner, the representative has not been. So you're the alternate. Is that not correct? Sorry for for clarity. I established myself as a member of the public uh, accepted to their uh, to their board. So um, that's that's how it has been. You're now. Not representing the municipality. Uh, no, because I have not been directed to do so. Uh, it shows you as an alternate. Did it not? Uh, of course, you're not on council, so uh, that's yeah. right. OK. So um, First Nation Relations Committee has had no meetings at all. As well. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, we're going to have to push for some meetings for that. Uh, Councillor Kushner, Mid Island Forest Lands Buyers Group, that's flag, correct? Um, 
Stanford Browning Library, this regional library is the dog is here. Somebody attended the Catholic Burning? No, Lauren was the first here. Oh, okay. okay. So we'll add that to the list as well. So I would suggest that we bring the list back at our next council meeting, an up to date full list of exactly who's doing what. Council agree? Yes. OK, then any information that somebody would want to send in regarding tourism or economic development also has time to do so prior to the next meeting, whether it's through correspondence or delegation. <clears throat> OK. So I lost page two of my agenda. Nope, there we go. Nope, I lost it. <clears throat> ah, thank you. Pardon me. New business. Any new business? None. Question period. Maximum 15 minutes. The purpose of the public question period is to enable citizens to ask questions to council about their issues that are important to the citizen asking the question. Speakers are asked to limit their questions to one each, and if time permits, after everyone has had the opportunity to ask questions, speakers may ask a second question. Citizens are asked to state their name and address. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak? Go ahead, sir. Come up to the microphone, please. My name is Bob Sampson. Your address too, please. My address? Yes, please. 595 Faber Road. Say word. Thank you. Now, I've been sitting there listening to you go circles. First of all, say that I'm not just a casual observer. I represent Sabre Tour. Second uh, thing I want to say is that I was under the understanding that I was invited to this meeting by Mr. Johnson. At a meeting that we had several weeks ago that lasted approximately two and a half hours, mm -hmm. where we discussed tourism's plans, what we were planning on doing, how we were going about doing it, and comparing it with Mr. Johnson's notes about he was what he was doing, so there would be no overlaps in anything that included trails and signage. So I'm sitting back there thinking, why bring that issue up when we already talked about that? And he's already got a clear understanding of what Sayward Tourism is. He also asked me about Sayward Futures, answers which I could not give, and I recommended that he have a discussion with Ms. Falson. I don't know if that ever happened, but it appears like it did not. So there's a lot of time going back and forth talking about things that Mr. Johnson already knew and already could have taken advantage of. But evidently that didn't happen. So I'm wondering if he was at the same meeting that I was. OK, hang on. To, hang on a minute. I understand that you're frustrated. OK, but let's keep the quorum here. Uh, decorum, pardon me. I'm one of the things. This is no, no, me. I understand. But one of the things that you have to understand is you may have had that meeting with. Counselor or pardon me, our CAO. But when we ask as counsel for for any group that falls under um, some of the responsibility of the municipality to do a presentation. That's to all of council. That's not just to the CAO. All of council is requesting that there's a presentation done. This has nothing to do with the information or whatever you gave to the CAO. Okay, this presentation is to council. It just appeared that the, what we had addressed at our meeting was also being addressed again in a way that appeared that we never had the meeting. And if Mr. Johnson would like to respond to that, I would really appreciate that. CEO. Thank you, Mr. Sampson through um, through chair. Um, our meeting was spectacular. I, I thank you for the time. Uh, we established um, some good working uh, workings with the immediate. 
So that would be, we, we talked about the Folk Festival. Um, I'm, I'm very excited about what you can bring to the table on that one. Uh, we talked about um, some trails um, uh, and, and that type of activity so that there was no overlap. Um, and, and so that addressed the immediate, which is fantastic. Um, what we're sort of talking about today is um, the, the working agreement with a, a tourism committee, which, which obviously you're a chair for. So um, I uh, am not empowered to, to actually make decisions. Um, and the tourism committee um, um, in the past had a service agreement that enabled some of that work to take place on behalf of the municipality. Um, that that work that, that agreement is is currently expired. And so, um, what what you and I talked about was the immediate, and and it was fantastic. Uh, we established some some good things there. We we spoke about um, the fact that if the folk uh, festival grows, there's 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 likely uh, accommodation for that uh, at Kelsey Center uh, that we can bring to council. Uh, we talked about the staging and and how we're more than happy to have that go over to you for the immediate. Uh, we talked about the trails uh, for the bird sanctuary and and the other and some of the other trail work that you're doing so that there wouldn't be crossover. So certainly uh, I wouldn't on behalf of the village undertake work that, um, you know, you're, you're mid process on and vice versa. So I, I think our discussion was very fruitful. Uh, and now the next stage would be, um, you know, let's let's have service agreements or what have you in place based on on council um, so that you know, we continue um, the process in, in a much um, more collaborative and and long reaching uh, manner. So this would be uh, now getting to the agreement stage or or, or what have you, so that council can um, um, you know be aware of what's going on, uh, as well as uh, have the have the authorities uh, in place to 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 allow for some of that work to take place. So again, I want to emphasize that I really enjoyed our discussion together, and I think it uh, remedied a lot of immediate things. They needed attention. Uh, I thought it was very fruitful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I also would like to say that I was under the impression that one of the things that was going to be discussed, and I realized that you don't have a quorum, so you're not able to vote on anything, um, was whether tourism should be a standalone organization or a collaborative effort with the village council. That's one of the reasons I was here today to find out what kind of decisions that could be made so that we have a clearer understanding of where we stand as a group. Because until we do, it's really difficult to make decisions based on unknowns. And Understood. so it's, it's really imperative for us, you, the council, and tourism to have that understanding so that we can move ahead and do the things that we would like to do. And also, if we're a collaborative organization with the council to be able to come to you and present our ideas and hopefully get some positive feedback to say whether or not you agree with those ideas or if you can improve on those ideas. But I also want to say that if it's going to be a collaborative thing, then I idealistically would appreciate money being funneled into tourism because of the fact that we don't have much coming in except for the stipend for the $2,200 a year, which doesn't give us much to work with. If we're a standalone organization, I can understand where we wouldn't be depending on the village council for any sort of remuneration. But until we come to some understanding about that, and I'm hoping that we do soon, I'm not prepared to make any decisions for Sayward Tourism. We're moving ahead with committees right now to make decisions about certain areas. And again, Mr. Johnson's aware of that because you had a copy of the agenda and we're at our first meeting. We do not have elected officers for Sayward Tourism because our first meeting was basically based on how many people in this community, village and valley, were interested in being part of the tourism organization. And I have to say that there are, in say with tourism, a lot more people wanting to be involved than disappointingly the people that want to be involved in say with futures. But we all have to work together to achieve a common goal. Agreed. 
One of the things when we have a committee of the whole meeting, it um, we as council are bound by the government act that we cannot actually vote and make a resolution. So I'm sorry you were under the impression that a resolution was going to be made tonight, but for everything that we have discussed tonight, uh, that comes back to our next meeting in June, and then that's when a recommended resolution is put forth on what we've discussed. That's how a committee of the whole meeting works. If it's a regular council meeting, we can make a motion right then and there, and we can run with it, but not during a cow. I'm familiar with that. The thing is that we haven't had a committee of the whole addressing these issues. No, we have not, but we also, this is where we've discussed, we need to have that communication and we need to go forward. Now, if you're working, if you're looking at a collaborative group with us, then as the CAO mentioned, then we have to look at service agreements and references and so on and so forth. Which but we, that's- Which we already had uh, until- Had in the past. Until they expired. Right. So we have to know whether we're going to renew that or whether we're going to make amendments to that's that. That's correct. So that we can fully function. That's correct. And that's when you do your presentation to council. At that time, it won't be in a committee of the whole meeting. It'll be at a council meeting. And then we'll be able to either make a decision there if council is comfortable with that. And if they're not, then we bring it back to the next meeting. Okay. The, the one thing that Mr. Johnson explained to me was that I being the chair of Sandwood Tourism, bring all those ideas that we come up with at our meetings through all our committees and the choices and decisions that we are looking at making, bring them to Mr. Johnson, who then comes to the village council meetings and does our presentation. And that Sandwood Tourism would not be required to be present at those meetings unless specifically requested to do so. No, um, the the CAO does not do a presentation to council. Go ahead. Sorry, I, I, I just wanted to respond, um, Mr. Sampson, because um, you, you and I had, had a discussion um, about what different setups could look like. So ad advisory, um, or, um, you know, if it's a, if it's an actual committee, um, but ultimately all decisions are, are through, through council and, and presentations, um, uh, are for council, um, sort of decisions. I, I, I feel your pain in that, you know, you, you want to know what the next steps are. Um, you, you want to be able to, you know, make decisions as you, as you did in the past. So that would be subject to the next, um, uh, council meeting where uh, these are these things are deliberated and um, council decides what things look like in terms of committees or advisory groups or or such so um, if if you did come to the meeting with with expectations that that would be sort of more clear tonight I, I apologize for that um, that will have to be deliberated by by council what what can happen in the future if you have a tourism committee meeting you can have the notes you can give it to the CEO to do a staff report to do a staff report on that, and that'll be included in our agenda. But typically, what we also like to see is quarterly, for example, is a member of the tourism committee coming to council and doing a presentation and saying, this is where we're at, this is where we're going, this is what we've done. And typically, if there's any monies given by the municipality, a reporting process has to be in place. You have to report where that money has gone and how much it was, so on and so forth. That's typical under any municipality giving money to a community group. I, I understand that, and that's why we keep uh, concise records of everything that we do from every single right. meeting. But that has to be presented to council as well. Only if we work as a collaborative organization. No, if we're giving you money. Right, that's where I'm going. If right. If you're standalone. If you're standalone, you don't. But if we give you money, as as they have for the last few years in the past, that's something that needs to be reported back to council yes. because it's council's responsibility to account that for understand. that monies. Right. But in the two years that I've been here, we haven't had a report. Exactly. At, because we haven't been functioning. So it's really impossible to give a written report based on something okay. that doesn't exist. Okay. But that's how we're going to work it in the future if we go that way. So we have you scheduled. 
correct? Yeah. And I'm sorry if there was a misunderstanding, uh, but a committee of the whole meetings are a certain structure as council meetings are different and where we can actually vote and do resolutions. Yes, I understand. So I apologize. Voice my concerns here. No, nope, which is which is fine. And you're welcome to be a delegation on any council meeting or any cow meeting that you like. You just have to inform um, a week prior to. And we'd be more than happy to have you as a delegation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Sampson. Next. Mary Ruth Snyder. I have, uh, I have one question. Um, Sue, you mentioned that you had written a letter last summer to Nicole Rempel, Chief Nicole Rempel of the Comox. Did you write that letter from Sabre Futures or as a council person? I wrote it from Sabre Futures. Okay. Um, in my uh, in my experience of how I have understood. Um, it's not surprising you didn't. All of me is it's not surprising you didn't get a response. Don't take it personally. Uh, I'd just like to say that um, I also have a good relationship with uh, Chief Nicole Rempel. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when I had to write a 90,000 page document for the um, water tenure, I sent a letter to, um, and I had to have a letter of uh, support from the Comox First Nations. I sent a letter to them, and three weeks later, I had the, I had the response. So I'm aware of the lag time, but um, I, I personally have a good relationship w with, um, with Chief Rempel and. That's based on the previous mayor's um, relationship also with her in reconciliation. Mm. So, okay. but um, <laughs> the. So as I just I'm asking for clarity at this point, so the next Sayward Futures board meeting is June the 13th, which is a Monday. And so the presentation to mayor and council is the very next day, correct? Okay. And the tourism is going to be part of that presentation, correct? No. Okay. Tourism is in July. Until July? Correct. Okay. So to deal with the immediate, as um, the CAO was referring to, um, I believe that the approach, um, that, like out of these the three meetings that have happened so far every Wednesday. So three weeks ago, it was the tourism gathering. Then last week and the week before was just a loose gathering of people interested in writing. Well, just in ideas sharing actually is how the two nights ended up unfolding very positively. Um, so what came out of that was I had volunteered my um, communication um, experience in helping communicate with everyone. So I had called director Wally to just ask him if he would like to be included. And he said, oh, absolutely. Yes, that's a fantastic idea. So I've made sure that he is on these emails that I'm sending out, not spamming people every day. It's only going out <laughs> once a week or once every two weeks just to keep everybody in the loop. And I've ensured to copy CAO, so the village, and, and also to ask him to share it with Mayor and Council so that Mayor and Council is aware of the developments and the enthusiasm. And that um, Director Wally has also received a copy of those emails, so he is also in the loop. So um, I think that sort of establishment of emailing a message and keeping everyone in the loop. It, and that's one of the ways that we've been successful in Campbell River with all of these other organizations that I've addressed earlier in my presentation. Um, that's how it has, that's how it's worked. And when you guys, when each of you were addressing the committees that you are attending, but not necessarily reporting back to Marin Council, 
I'm just wondering if maybe to save time, because everybody has a very limited capacity of what they're able to do, is that when you attend an SRD meeting and you're taking notes, maybe you can put down in bullet points and then your summary and send that out to your fellow counselors so that they see the high points of what was covered off and at the hospital board do the same thing. So then it's minimizing the amount of verbal presentation and allowing everybody to read the notes. And if they have any questions, they can ask the question, but otherwise they've read your notes and they accept them and you can move on to the really important thing of fixing the infrastructure, which you're doing, which is fantastic. So that shared email system and sharing your the what you do at the meetings would just be a huge time saver for you guys. Because again, it's a capacity issue. Like you are a council tonight of three. So that's not, and you have a big, big, big job. And so the email is going to help. And so when, um, and I, I think something that um, Councillor Polson said that up until two years ago, there actually was somebody from council that sat on the Saver Futures board that would come at that there was a collaborative back and forth in communication. So I think it's a no brainer that that can get reestablished again with very little effort. And then everybody would be on the same page in grants so that nobody's writing for the same grant for and competing against each other. That's not good. Now, with regards to tourism, I just saw an email today. I didn't read the whole thing, but it came out from Destination Think. And I did you see that? Did, are you on their email? Are you? I'm working with Destination Think right now. No, I know. Did you see the email about the tourism fund that they've just released? It's something like eighty-four million dollars or something. Yeah, it's, uh, there's there's several emails from them today, but yeah, that was one of them. Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right. So there is a a brand new fund that Destination Think is funding for eighty-four million dollars, and any tourism group, municipality, collaborative effort can apply for some of that money. So uh, yeah, just want to make sure. And again, this is one of the things that we can share that information through email sharing and and I and in the short term councillor Tinsley um, I can absolutely move forward in providing the information for businesses to go through the sign up with the destination Campbell website that's not that's yes I can do that so excellent yeah. okay yes and yes and yeah, Councillor Councillor Polson. Councillor Polson, yeah. Do you have any questions or anything? Or CAO. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, one one question, if I may, Mary Ruth. I I thank you for those summaries. I I think that enabled us to to get a, a couple of projects done um, just by by that communication. So uh, you know, case in point of that is is some of the signage that that that's being underway. The one thing that I I, I just I, I'm not quite sure of yet is is those meetings that are happening Wednesdays is that tourism committee or is that Sayward Futures nope. because they're well no I guess it's under the Sayward Futures umbrella right or is it just people sharing ideas right now meeting? it's just a, yeah um, that was my feeling it's a community meeting with interested people getting together to talk about ideas around um, economic development and mm -hmm. tourism yeah. and grant writing like how can we all work together to apply for these grants that are available and the ideas that were coming out of last group were just phenomenal from what you know just you know, just and, and there's no and just to be clear there's no movement forward on any of it at this point it really is people sharing their ideas around their own passions and there's like a there's like dozens and dozens of steps that have to happen between the idea meeting and actually putting pen to paper with the grant. Okay. So I think once the ideas are solidified at that point, if it does fall under Sayward Future or the tourism, it definitely would warrant a presentation to mayor and council to see if there is municipal engagement and possible funding for that idea. 
the other part of that is that when you're the other part of that is when you're applying for grants, um, you need you really need to have First Nations um, yes. support, municipal support, um, other uh, community group supports, and um, and regional district support too. So it's like looking at it's showing that yeah. everyone is working together towards this. It's not just. Um, and that's all in addition to engineering reports that have yeah. to be shelf ready, right? So yeah. it's it's that establishment of all of those collaborative relationships, making sure they're in place so that when that grant comes along, the engineering report's ready to go and you can just pick up the phone and say, Director Wally, we have this opportunity. Can we please have a letter in 72 hours? It's just that sort of a. Yeah, that won't happen with council, though. Right. No, I understand yeah. because you only meet every two weeks. Correct. Right. However, However, I is there is there not under the provincial municipal umbrella a mechanism in place that was put in place during COVID and still is in place for mayor and council to receive a request and actually <clears throat> like approve it with before an actual meeting? No, <laughs> we, we'd have to have a special meeting. But there is no by um, by email, for example, when we approve, we would have to hold okay. a special meeting, okay. which would have to be, is it 24 or 48 hours written notice to the public? I think it's 48 hours written notice to the public in order to have the meeting. Okay, all right. Yeah, okay, great. So does anybody have any more questions? Councillor Tinsley? Uh, sorry, no, I have no more questions. Thank you. And thank we're all you. good. And, OK, yeah. thank, thank you. you very much. OK, folks, we're going to pack it in. Before Councillor Polson falls fastly asleep. I am calling for the meeting to be adjourned. Go home. <laughs>